Hi class, welcome to Principles of Cooking. The first thing we're going to discuss is heat transfer. Conduction is the movement of heat from one thing to another. And when we are cooking, water is the best conductor of heat. Now we have convection and two types. Natural convection, which is the tendency of warm liquids and gases to rise while cooler ones fall. Boiling water is a good example of this. There's also mechanical convection, and that is where you're actually moving hot air or liquid manually. We also have conduction through radiation. There is infrared cooking, and an example of that is the broiler in your oven where heat waves bounce off your food and that food absorbs it. When you're out camping, when you're toasting marshmallows, that is infrared cooking. Microwave cooking is a process of radiation that agitates water molecules all at one time, and that's how that energy is spread and why it's so quick. We have the effects of heat, and this is very important to understand, and the language that we use in the kitchen. Proteins coagulate. This is a permanent solidification of something that is liquid or raw. And once you've coagulated a protein, you can never go back to a raw state. That's why it's very important to pay very close attention to how long you are cooking your product. Starches gelatinize. And gelatinization occurs when starches absorb water. So when you're thickening soups or sauces, those starch granules float around and as they start to heat up, they swell and they take up more space. Sugars caramelize and that is the permanent transformation that creates color, texture, and flavor. Be really careful when you're caramelizing. We don't want to over caramelize because it can create bitterness in your food. And remember too that only dry heat cooking methods create caramelization. Moist heat cooking methods do not. Water evaporates. This is very important to understand. Everything you're cooking is just about 75% plus made up of water. So as you add heat to it, that water evaporates. Pay close attention to that. We don't want to dry out our proteins and we don't want to overcook our product. We don't want it depleted of moisture. Fats melt and fats have a smoke point and that's the point at which your fat will begin to smoke. So it's important to know what fats to use with what cooking methods high heat cooking methods, you want to use a fat that has a high smoke point. Low heat cooking methods, you can use a fat that has a lower smoke point. Know that whatever fat you're using, that's what your product will taste like. Now, different cooking methods we have. The first one we're going to talk about is dry heat cooking method. And this is the conduction through air or fat. You have broiling, grilling, roasting, baking, sauteing, pan frying, and deep frying. So remember that these processes help to create caramelization, color, flavor, texture. Then we have moist heat cooking methods. And this is conduction through water or steam, which are which is a gas. You have poaching, it's really gentle, simmering, a little bit more action, boiling, usually high action, and this is like what you would cook pasta in, and then you have steaming. Steaming is fantastic for vegetables. Now moist heat cooking is really used to tenderize and emphasize the natural flavors of food. So just remember that we're not looking to really develop any color here. You should be using this with foods that have their own uh, integrity without caramelization. You've got combination cooking and these are both a neat way to be able to tenderize food that is high in potentially connective tissue meaning it's tough cuts of meat uh, and braising is where you have you you caramelize your product first and then you put it in the process presence of moisture and helps to tenderize. It makes it very delicious. So if you've got, let's say a lamb shank or something like that, you can braise it and you get that caramelization. So you've got the color, you've got the delicious flavor profile, but then you put it in the 
presence of moisture, so a nice stock, and you cook it for a long time under low heat conditions, and it really just tenderizes that delicious piece of meat. Then there's stewing, usually done with smaller cuts of meat, and again, you caramelize your meat, make sure it's it tastes good, and then you put it in the presence of moisture. You cook it for a period of time, you know, it's a smaller cut, doesn't take quite as long, and you just as soon as it's tender, then it's done. Don't be fooled. You can overcook your food in the presence of moisture. And that's it. I appreciate your time. If you have any questions, let us know.